until recently, we knew practically nothing of Sogdian history and culture of the beginning of our era. Well, uh, from the first century, we had um, one paragraph in Chinese sources and uh, one mention in Ptolemy. We didn't have a single excavated building, just um, some pottery. When we started our project on that collection of the British Museum, it was um, really interesting because collection of the British Museum is the best collection of early Sogdian material. This collection forced us in some way to concentrate on early history from the first century of our era in order to show what actually do we have. Coins of Hercotus, which were minted in the middle of Zarafshan Valley. Coins of uh, Ashtat, minted in the Principality of Nakshab, which is modern Karshi. And then coins of somebody called Zag, as we figured out a couple of weeks ago, who used to be called in school literature for about 150 years, Sega Haris, that should be actually dismissed. At the beginning of the first century in Domini, imitations of Antiochus, which were minted originally in Samarkand, branched into three separate coinages. Here they are positioned horizontally, one, two, three. Third one had this strange story about it, very ugly, I would say, distorted image of horse from the, from the coins of Antiochus after 200 years of imitations, was suddenly some supplemented by quite good portrait on the obverse. Portrait which had no precedent before in Central Asian uh, numismatics. The portrait of a man who obviously has a cranial deformation, that is a habit of Central Asian nomads, who actually has a specific, very popular among Central Asian nomads of the first century, Anna Domini, Goti, Espanol beard, who actually very non-Greek, as you can see, he has very long face with very long nose. On the obverse, you have inscription calling him Irkodis, in genitive Irkodi. And uh, on the other side, uh, we have an interesting creature in the middle. It's actually semi-rooster, semi-human being, who has fire coming out of his shoulders. He holds high torch with a fire. And the inscription on the left says Ordethroi, and on the right Makaroi. Makaroi is genitive of Greek Makaros, it's blessed. Uh, Ordethroi is a Iranian compound, the second part of which is certainly Athar, fire. Uh, and the first one is hard to interpret, possibly something connected to the protection. That was a suggestion by, uh, as old as uh, early 20th century, by Alud de la Fille. That is the portrait of the man. The portrait of the man is well known among Central Asian nomads. These wonderful writers from Arlat Plates have exactly the same hairstyle, uh, the same cranial shape, and uh, all kind of other things that make them very similar. First of all, we have a couple of such rooster men in Horezm in recent paintings discovered in Achchehan Kala. We have them in Sogdian Terracotta. Please note this birdie fit of this creatures on Sogdian ossuaries, and of course on uh, Sogdian couches in China where they present on sarcophagi. This creature is no doubt srosh, in other words, protector of fire in Zoroastrian tradition. And because our genitive, we actually can assume that a uh, man who was called Irkodus, who was obviously of Sarmatian origin, his name is likely to be Sarmatian, claimed that he is Zoroastrian and follower of Zoroastrian religion on the reverse of his coin, despite his very nomadic look on the obverse. Soon uh, it changed and uh, they forgot about rooster legs and started looking like Parthian sculptures. This coins affected something else. We're going now to the Principality of Nakshab, uh, which is actually in modern Karshi. The earliest coins depended on the coins of Yerkotas, they, in fact, in the upper corner you see how one copies another. And then there is a long line of imitations. Once have an inscription partially preserved, which actually says Ashtat in Sogdian. And these coins lead us to this magnificent coins with magnificent portrait. Well, the upper two examples of these imitations, below to the right two coins are coins of Ashtat, ruler of Nakshab in the first century Anadomini. It's clearly written in Sogdian behind his head, Ashtatu, 
On the left, for comparison, I actually put the coin of Herias, a ruler from Bactria from the same time, uh, whose portrait affected this portrait, modified it in some way. And uh, this is the appearance of Sogdians of the first century of our era, ruling class. There is a small denomination with a horse. That's how this coinage of Ashtat looks like. Well, it has incredible Greek inscription on the back, which says Basileus and Diohe. If we look at the coins, we would see that there is a warrior dressed as Greek. Moreover, he has a long cloak, and it's all reasons, we have all reasons to believe that this long cloak, which is shown in a very complex way, was actually uh, taken from a sculpture. He is an archer, and in a very rare pose, he actually shot his arrow and looks where this arrow actually ended. In the whole Hellenic sculpture, as much as I was able to discern, the only type is Apollo of Leoharas, which was reproduced. On the coin, it actually says Basileus Antiochi, and this is a Greek warrior. What does Basileus Antiochi does on the coin, other side of which actually occupied by a portrait of nomadic ruler who has a perfectly Zoroastrian name, Ashtato, which is Theophoric in Zoroastrian, well, he must have been progenitor of the dynasty. Antiochus was the last Hellenistic ruler who was in possession of Sogdiana. He was half Sogdian because his mother, Apama, was actually the daughter of Spitamanus. Thus, thus, he was a suitable progenitor for local dynasty. In conclusion, what I would like to say is that uh, suddenly we got a story. We have a country which has Zoroastrian faith, formerly nomadic rulers with their hairstyles, their costumes, their portraits, not imitating anything. This is original portrait of this nomadic ruler, and it is formulated in Sogdiana earlier even than in Bactria. He rises later. And finally, in the first century under Domini in Sogdiana, there was a still strong Hellenistic heritage. They knew who was Basileus Antiochus, they knew something about Greek. They could actually spell things and even correctly insert a co-joining letter in a compound. Thank you very much.